Hello dear students I am Samir Velankar I welcome all of you to this video which is based on the topic time and space complexity Now although I have labeled the video as time and space in this video and in the coming videos we will see time complexity we will see the space complexity later on <music> now what do you mean by this word time complexity is we want to find out time taken by our algorithm or by the code how much time will a given code consume or take when it is executed any beginner would feel that to find out the time taken by an algorithm or a program we will use a, a stopwatch somebody would feel that we would use a stopwatch such that we will start running our program on our machine and we will record we will find out how much time was taken by the program to execute but that's not the way we are not going to measure the time taken by the algorithm or program by using a stopwatch and we won't say that it takes so many milliseconds or so many seconds that is we won't associate any unit any any unit uh, in which the time is measured but we will specify the time taken by our algorithm in terms of data size generally data size is n isn't it n so given the data size of the problem like you want to sort array of n elements so this n is important in our discussion or given a matrix of size n by n and you want to find transpose of the matrix so that is the data size of the given problem which is important and second is number of operations number of operations performed by the algorithm or the program is what is going to decide the time taken by the algorithm so basically if we represent tn as the time taken by some algorithm t is the time taken by some algorithm to perform an operation on data size n n is the data size then it is represented this time is represented in terms of data size n and number of operations performed by the algorithm okay so let's see let's see what what are some some of the examples really interesting examples we have got let's see how do you measure the time we consider a function which is given here the sum function which has a parameter int n some number is passed and what the function does is it finds summation of all numbers from 1 to n so suppose n is 4 we have passed the parameter 4 then the for loop for loop written in this particular code will run with x going from 1 to n observe that means x will go from 1 to 4 and each value of x from 1 to 4 will be added in x added in s s is the sum and finally sum will be returned so very simple function we have started with all numbers from 1 to n are added using a for loop now the question is what is the time taken by this function what is the time complexity time complexity means what is the time taken by the function now we will use a method called frequency count method frequency count okay sometimes you know this frequency time uh, count method can be very very time consuming on paper so many many a times we will require more time finding our answer but i i promise you trust me that initially you know learning frequency count method gives us lot of insight on time complexity and later on we will just forget to forget this method to count or to rather find out the frequency what am i talking about is to find out the time taken by this algorithm or this function we will first of all question how many times each line runs each of these lines how many times these lines are executed okay and that's called the frequency frequency means the number of times each operation each statement written in the algorithm or in the program how many times it runs is called frequency so let's analyze this this particular function here we go now our aim is 
aim is to find out time taken by the above function i have written the function again over here okay this is our code the code is the function sum then i have written frequency of each and every statement now actually there is a statement called declaration of variables over here but notice i have not written frequency of this actually this line runs once isn't it once in the entire function because declaration is done only once but i have ignored it okay you can assume you can you can consider that one also you can write that one here but i have not considered it it won't make any difference so you need not count the declarations how many times the declaration runs anyway it runs only once now notice the for loop now the for loop runs with x going from 1 to n correct so this for this statement itself the for runs n times isn't it because x is going from 1 to n no 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 this statement runs n plus 1 times because you just assume that n is 3 let's say let's say n is 3 then when x is 1 the loop runs when x is 2 the loop runs when x is 3 the loop runs because now x is less than or equal to 3 and when x becomes 4 the loop breaks isn't it the condition written x less than or equal to n x less than or equal to n becomes false so actually this condition is checked four times this condition x less than or equal to n is checked even when x is 4 so actually the for loop is touched the for loop is reached by our program four times when n is 3 isn't it so that's why i have written frequency of the for itself as n plus 1 whatever is n if n is 3 the for will be reached four times if n is 5 for will be reached five times isn't it we have we have counted that final condition also when the condition becomes false the loop breaks okay so the for executes n plus 1 times but what's the statement written inside the for you see inside the for there is a statement s is s plus x now come on this statement will run only n times i hope you are understanding because if n is 3 1 will be added x is 1 2 will be added x is 2 3 will be added x is 3 but when x becomes 4 when this x becomes 4 this loop breaks isn't it so the condition of the for loop is tested n plus 1 times but the statement will run n times only i hope you got this so n plus 1 is the frequency count of the for statement and n is the frequency count of the job job is s is s plus x which is repeated by the for loop now there is one more line after the for loop towards the end of the function return s everybody knows this will run only once finally sum is returned so the frequency count is simply one and then that's the end of the algorithm or the function isn't it so what is the total number of instructions how many instructions are executed in all see actually while watching this you might say this algorithm contains four instructions or five instructions but you know that instructions are repeated by the for so that's what is called frequency count so how many total instructions are executed the total instructions are n plus 1 plus n plus 1 so it comes out as 2n plus 2 isn't it so hence the above code runs a total of total of 2n plus 2 instructions so now we wanted to specify time isn't it how much time will be taken by this algorithm now you say the time taken by this algorithm will be equal to time taken to run 2n plus 2 instructions 2n 2n plus 2 instructions should be executed so time taken will be equal to time taken to run these instructions that's what is time complexity you don't specify time complexity in terms of seconds or milliseconds you say it is equal to the time taken to run the number of operations now some machine might be fast some machine might be very slow then it depends on the machine isn't it that how much time that machine takes to run so many instructions hence coming back to this i am marking this just check 2n plus 2 is a polynomial of degree 1 check this 2n plus 
is nothing but 2 n raised to 1, isn't it? Plus 2. So, this is easily a polynomial of degree 1. Then we say the above code runs in order of n time. We have watched the video about big O notation, isn't it? And how big O notation, how big O notation can be written for a function which specifies which specifies the the order or rather asymptotic notation of the given function. So actually, you can stop saying that this program will take or does this uh, this program performs performs 2n plus 2 instructions. But instead of writing such a big answer 2n plus 2, we can write in short that this algorithm performs an order of n. Then the reader or the listener would know, okay, you must have got some polynomial, some big polynomial in which the highest order was 1 and all other constants like plus 2 and the multiplicative constant called 2 was simply dropped and you gave the importance to n because you wanted to specify that the algorithm is linear, it is not quadratic, it is not the function of square of n, it is just the function which is a linear function, isn't it? So that's the way how we have specified the time complexity. Let's see another example. Now here comes the other example. Consider the code given, which is again some, some function, which has a parameter in 10. And we are, we are having a for loop, which takes x from 1, counter x from 1, up to n by 2. Check that it is taking up to the counter up to n by 2, isn't it? So what will be the time complexity of this? The time complexity of this will be the order of n again. Just check this. It will be order of n. Okay. Now you watch if n is let's say 4, then this loop will go from 1 to 4 by 2. 1 to 4 by 2 means 2. So this loop repeats two times. But what if n was 8? Then this loop will go on by up to 8 by 2. 8 by 2 is 4. That means this loop will repeat 4 times. So given the value of n, the loop repeats n by 2 plus 1 times. This for loop will repeat n by 2 plus 1 because you have to count the condition also. And the inner statement, the job will repeat n by 2 times. So that's the frequency count I have shown. I have written the same function over here. And the frequency count shown is the for will run n by 2 plus 1 times, isn't it? Plus 1 for that condition, the last condition which makes the for loop break and the statement written in the for loop repeats n by 2 times. Now the final statement return s will repeat once. So the total n by 2 a plus 1 plus n by 2 plus 1. If you add all this, you will get n plus 2. Now this is again a polynomial of degree 1 n raised to 1 plus 2. So we can say this algorithm also works in the order of O n. Amazing, isn't it? If in some example, you would have got n plus 100, let's say, still you will say it is order of n. If you got 3 n plus 100 in some other program, you will still say it is order of n because we just want to specify asymptotic notation. That is growth rate of the function is not quadratic. It is linear. We will see more examples in the next video. Thank you very much.